Hello everyone, welcome back to the series of Python Unleashed. My name is Ajay and uh, today's topic is we are going to learn how to create multiple objects and how to store them into a list. Okay, so we'll be creating multiple objects and we'll be storing them into a list and once we store them into a list, we are going to access the objects and how to uh, evoke the functions, the member functions of that particular object. So for example, we have a list out here. So we have a list L and uh, then we will have object one, object two. So we will keep on storing the objects into a list. And then how we are going to access the objects and how we are going to evoke their functions. Okay, so this is the tutorial all about. So let's immediately switch to Python. So we have a class already that I've defined over here. We have a class with the name student. Okay, simple class that we have taken in my previous tutorial. And uh, this is the constructor that we have. And these are the member data that is a uh, registration number, the role number, the name, class and section. So these are the member data. And then we have uh, two uh, member functions that is the enter data and display. So enter data is basically used to accept the data from the user and that data we are storing in the member uh, member data that is the member variables and as you can see out here okay and then we have the uh, display function the member function the method in which we are actually displaying the data that's it so it's a simple uh, independent class okay with the name student now till now what we have done we have just created a single object for example a is equal to student so we created a single object out here and then we will accept the data using a dot enter data and then a dot display isn't it this is the thing that we have learned till now but understand that one object basically represents one record if you talk about this particular class student one record will represent one object for example i have to accept more than one object so how i can do that now i can do that is like uh, using an another name that is object b and then with the name student right so this is object a and this is object b now i created two objects okay but what if if i want to create some around 50 objects so in that case i have to uh, you know during the design time i mean before the runtime itself i have to uh, declare these object variables but it is not that feasible so if you understand but once we have a lot of data to be collected suppose we have uh, 50 numbers that needs to be accepted from the user so in other programming languages we use an array and in python we will use a list isn't it so the same thing we will do with the objects also suppose if i have to accept 50 records of the students and store them in different objects so in that case i cannot have a, you know 50 different names so in that case i'll be using a list okay so let us just have a list so i will declare a list with the name l and i will have that as an empty list and then i will just have a loop just for you know accepting multiple records from the user so i will have i in range and at this point i'm just having two so which means i will be accepting uh, two records from the uh, from the user you can have as many numbers as you want you can have 50 out here so you we will be accepting 50 records from the user okay so at this point just for the tutorial point of view i'm just accepting two records and then what i'm going to do is since I created one object over here, that is A is equal to student. And uh, what I will do, I will first accept the data that is using this function, that is A dot enter data. Okay, so A dot enter data is basically I'm evoking the function, which is this one. And then this function will actually collect the data from the user. Okay, after doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this object into the list and how to store the items or the elements into a list that is L dot and I will use the append function and I will give that A. So now we are actually storing that object into a list and I don't require this over here. Okay, that's it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use again a for loop to display 
all the records in fact there are only two records over here so i will use the range function again and then what i will do how to access the object so simple i can use the index value that is l of i and what will be i i will be zero and then i will become one since this range function is two so it will be zero and one so i will be zero so l of zero and then i have to evoke this function so that Using this function, I can display the data. Now, how I'm going to do this? So simple, I can just do dot. And over here, you're not going to get any help. That is the IntelliSense, which it is not going to show you anything. But you need to just type display, which is the name of the member function that is display out here, isn't it? So this is how you can access the object variables and you can evoke the functions of a particular object okay so this is the technique so l of i dot display so i'm evoking this function and what will be i i will be zero then z uh, l of zero dot display and then l of one dot display so the objects will get access and for those particular objects we are going to evoke the function that is display okay so it seems everything is good everything is fine let us just run this and i will enter the data over here now that is enter registration number so i'll just give one roll number also i will give it as one name i'll give it as a j class as 10 and section as a and then again you can see it is asking me the next registration number so i'll give it as two roll number i'll give it as 10 name this time i'll give it as vj and class as maybe seven and a and here is the output now you can see the output and we haven't got the required output. Why? Because both the records are the same. You can see this is the first record and this is the second record. Though the value of i will be zero, right? So there is no problem with the indexing out here, but still we have the same records. Now why we have the same records out here? It is because we are creating the object only once. You uh, understand that this particular statement is where the objects get created. So we have created only one object and that same object is getting accessed every time. So we are accepting the second data that is the enter data for the same object. So the second record, the second data that we have fed in, we have feed in that got stored into that object. And so you can see for the both the time we are getting the same data. Now what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to just copy this, we are supposed to cut this and enter this inside this loop. Okay, so you can see what will happen with this, uh, what is going to happen? The thing is every time this statement gets executed at this particular point, it is it will get executed twice. So this particular A object, we are actually creating one more time, though the name is same but we are actually creating uh, two different objects and then we are accepting data into that object and we are storing that into the list. Okay, just to show you, I will just show you, see, this is the super class that is student. At this point, there is no super class, there's only one class that is the class student and you can see there is a print statement out here that got displayed over here. Why this got displayed? Because uh, when when this particular statement gets executed the constructor will get evoked isn't it as in my previous tutorial I told I told you that whenever we create an object immediately the constructor that is the init function gets evoked so you can see that this particular statement got printed out here super class that is student right now let me just enter the data that is one one and then I'll give the name as a J class as 10 section as a and then again you can see we have the same output that is super class student y because again this particular again this particular statement got executed so a new object has now got created since and that init function got evoked again because of this statement means uh, that is the reason this statement got printed okay and then i'll give registration number as two roll number again i will give the same and this time I'll give the name as VJ, class as seven and section as A. And now you can see that this is the first record that we have and this is the second record. 
isn't it? Just to make it more clear to you, what we will do is we will just use a print statement just to separate the records. And uh, again, I'll just copy this and I will paste it over here. Now, let us run this one more time. One, one, name as a J, class as 10, A. Again, one more new record. Roll number as 10, then name as BJ, class as maybe 7, and section as A. And you can see over here. Now it's very clear to you. This is the first record, and this is the second record. So this way, if I make this five also, so we, we can accept five records. In fact, the five objects will get created, and those objects will be storing it in a list. And then using again a loop, we are accessing that particular object and then we are evoking the function of that particular object of that class, isn't it? So this is how you can create multiple objects and we can store those objects into a list and then we can access those objects and we can evoke their functions. Okay, so this is how to do it. That's it for today. Bye for now.